use data mining. Data mining is about the, the learning the rules, or we say mining the rules, search the rules. So it uh, belongs to the simplest branch of machine learning, right? The most uh, popular algorithm of data mining is the decision tree. Uh, here is an example that we can learn the uh, decision tree for the survival rate of passengers on Titanic. Titanic. Right, so if we try, here's a data set uh, about the profile of all the passengers on Titanic. And if we use the profile to predict if the passenger can survive or die, uh, we we will get this decision tree. Huh? So the decision tree will first uh, select a feature, or you can say an attribute, to decide uh, which way to go. So it's a, this is a binary tree. Huh? So first, uh, let's check whether you, the passenger is male or female. If you are male, then it checks the age of the passenger. If the passenger is uh, older than 9.5 years old, then it's highly possible he will die. He would die, right? The 61% chance to die. But if the it's a it's a child, it's a kid, uh, younger than 9.5, then it will want to check if he has cyberlings. He has siblings. If he has siblings, then uh, too many siblings, then still it has higher chance to die, huh? But anyway, if you are a male, you have a much lower survival rate on, uh, on Titanic. Okay, so we know that the decision tree, huh? First, uh, we our observation is that this tree can easily be interpreted by human. Right? We can understand the rules, uh, so we can, uh, you know, analyze the data set automatically. And then, uh, okay, so we are uh, easy to justify the learning result. Another thing is that the data mining, uh, uh, we, so we use the text, textbook get data mining here. It's a free textbook you can download from website. And the, the authors are uh, the creator of Weka, a very famous mining you can uh, first, uh, The first part of this book are teaching the fundamental algorithms like trees or association rules. Uh, data mining algorithms. And then the second part is, are the second part is about how to use Weka. So let's see our first example. Huh? So uh, usually data mining is very relate, relevant to database, right? So that's a data mining. And in a database, you may see a data set like this, right? It's supposed to be it's a, it's a synthetic data set. It's predict under different weather condition, uh, you will play again or not. The game will be played or not. Uh, so it's predict under different weather conditions, a game will be played or not. So there are four features. The first is outlook. Outlook is uh, the weather, right? Uh, it, whether the, the day is sunny or overcast or rainy. Uh, rainy. And the second feature is temperature. Temperature is hot, uh, mild, or cool. Oh. And then uh, humidity. Humidity. Whether humidity is high, normal, uh, only high in the normal. So humidity only have two two features, right? Oh. Two options. And the uh, the windy, huh, false or true, oh, false or true. And the final prediction is a binary that whether game will be played or not. This is a simple weather problem data set. So here is a Weka uh, shows how to um, define data set for data mining tool like Weka. So there are first the uh, block defined attribute, right? Attributes and uh, there are data type, data type. So that's what 
values. The first attribute is called outlook, and there are three options or three possible results, sunny, overcast, rainy. And then the data set here, huh? so data set will be each each line will be one instance. There are four team instance, huh? so include the uh, data condition huh? and uh, the humidity, windy, huh? all the data set. So let's uh, quickly learn some rules of where to play, right, from single data set. Huh? So we can see from the uh, first uh, several first two rows, we can define a rule from first two rows, right? First two lines. From first two lines, we know that outlook. Uh, if the outlook is outlook is sunny and the, the humidity is high, then place no, right? From those two two lines, we can define a rule set. Can we find? Oh, oh yeah, so there are other other rules. So many data sets satisfy this rule, right? Sunny, high, no. And the second rule is that the uh, outlook is raining and the uh, windy is true. So the play is no. Rainy, windy, true, rainy, windy, true, right? Oh, second rule. So you can learn many rules, right, from this data set. Also, it's a rule based uh, learning. Uh, it's, not it's not necessary a tree structure. Uh, okay, so we can learn rules. It's a lot of rules. So uh, let's Look at the most uh, our most uh, familiar data set, iris flower, right? So if we use the rule based system, it will be a little bit messy, right? There are too many rules uh, and the very details. So uh, uh, from this example, we can see that the uh, rule base is not very suitable for uh, continuous data, although it, you can use it for continuous data. But if you try to learn rules for classified flowers, you will get many rules like this, right? So first rule is that if the setup path is less than 2.55, uh, and uh, the petal length is less than 4.95, uh, and the petal width is less than 1.5, then it's uh, iris, versi uh, color. So it's tend to learn many rules, and uh, as you can guess, it's uh, tend to overfit data set. Right? So that's why we would like to, uh, we will have developed many algorithms for decision tree to avoid the, uh, overfitting. So here's another example. So there are two kinds of rule data set. One is, Decision tree usually will select one feature at a time and then try to classify into binary. Or actually, you can classify into more categories. Oh, it's okay. How about usually uh, many decision trees are binary tree? Oh, so you can learn a lot of rules, or rule based, or you can learn a decision tree. Oh, the, the point of decision tree is that the decision tree is more. A little more friendly to human, right? Or oh, us to understand. So here's a comparison between decision tree and the rule set. Uh, rule set. So both are based on classification rules, right? So they are rule based, but different in the representation. So it's just uh, different ways to represent the data. And the rule sets can retain most important information from a full decision tree, but with less complex model. So actually, in practice, usually we learn the decision tree first and then develop rules from the decision tree. I think it's because uh, rules tend to overfit. Right? So using the decision tree, you can focus one attribute at a time. So it's less prone to overfit. 
Okay, so here is another example. It's just an example, so uh, we don't go through into the details. But uh, we can also use the tree for numerical prediction. So we just learn the threshold, right? Threshold to to classify continuous data. Here is the CPU performance data set. Also, uh, here are the uh, attribute name. Also, first uh, is use the minima channels in units. Uh, I the architecture of CPU and it will predict the performance. So it's select different features and use some threshold and finally you can predict some numerical value. Those can use to predict numerical value or do regression. So trees can do not only do classification but also do uh, regression. Uh, okay. So it's a duplicate data also. Uh, also, this one shows that you can combine linear regression with regression tree. So let me go back. Oh, so there's a comparison between different methods. Uh, first, uh, here's the linear regression. You can use linear regression to predict predict the CPU performance, right? Then your data, your model is a lot of weights, right? Of prediction, there's a model attribute. But also, you can use the regression tree, like this part. The second part is the regression tree. And uh, you can combine those two methods, right? So you use the regression tree first, and then apply different set of linear regression model, right? So our models. Okay, so it's free. Huh? So tree is still alive in today's deep learning era, right? After you train in deep learning model, usually for professional stakeholder, they will train different models and combine them with SG Boost or Random Forest tree to do the fusion, make better predictions. But trees are today usually used for combine different models. And also, still, it's very useful for data mining, right? Most of our data are saved in the SQL database, uh, like the uh, shopping shopping website. Uh, there are a lot of data, and still, data mining is very useful. So let's see another uh, problem that can be solved by the decision tree, the XOR problem, right? So XOR, uh, there's a Reminder that XOR received uh, is called exclusive OR. Exclusive OR means only A and B are different. A input and B input are different, then they will output what? It will be activated. Oh, so the inputs are binary, either 0 or 1, like a switch, or turn on or turn off. And here's a table called the truth table, right? Table. A table can output if both input are zero, so it's output zero, but both switches are turned off, so output is off, uh, no problem. And if one of the uh, input has uh, is turned on, it's turned on, then the output should be one. The special case is that if both switches are turned on, then output is turned off, zero. And it's not a basic uh, element. Oh, we remember we have three basic logic gate, right? And or not. So XOR is not a basic uh, element. It can be, but it can be created by using the three basic logic gate. Here's the structure. <laughs> so, um, here's a decision tree for for XOR, it's actually quite simple, right? Quite simple, huh? So here the output is E and A, or B and A. So here's a input. So it's a input X, input Y, Y. So the output uh, usually B is zero. Right? So output is zero or one. Right, so this is cannot be separated by linear classifier, right? Non-linear, 
nonlinear problem. But it can be learned by decision tree, huh? decision tree. But first we check, you can choose different features. You can choose Y first, but first we can choose X first. If X is equal to one, if yes, then we check Y, uh, Y. If X, Y, Y are both one, then I'll put B zero. If it's a uh, one zero, I'll put one, right? So we can see uh, the benefit of this issue tree can easily solve the XOR problem. So that's why researchers prefer this issue tree uh, than the uh, deep learning before. Oh, no, no, it's zero, zero, right? Zero, zero. Uh, zero, one. One. Okay, so this is three can easily learn the nonlinear problem. Right. Good. Okay, um, but decision trees uh, it usually tends to overfit and can learn too many sub tree, too many sub trees. Right. So suppose we have two rules, right? We have two rules set. If we choose A for decision tree, you need to choose an attribute. If we choose A first, then the second rule must be repeat twice. So we only have two rules, but if we learn a decision tree, we will have a duplicated subtree because uh, each attribute need to repeat twice. Yeah. So this part is the duplicate part. However, if you choose to split, then it needs to duplicate. Yeah. So a little bit. So uh, you can develop an algorithm to save the duplicate subtree, right? You know, to cut to grooming, right? So that's why we will see how to grooming. Interestingly, in, 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 in data deep learning, now we are doing a lot of grooming to make our uh, neural network smaller. So there are always a way to <laughs> reduce the size of the model. Okay, so there's a first uh, learning rule, also one rule, one R method, a simple method to create a model. That is a it means that let's choose one attribute and uh, create a rule. Oh, just one attribute and create a rule. So I put the original data set here. Oh, data set here. Data. And from first uh, we choose an attribute. Outlook, right? We choose an attribute. And then, then we make a Statistics. So if we choose uh, uh choose sunny for no, sunny no, sunny no, uh sunny no, sunny yes, sunny yes. So the error rate is uh two five, right? Two three, right? Two three. Because two are uh, uh, two predict yes, so the error, the error rate are uh, two five. And then for the first attribute, there are three, three type, three data type. So we need to do it for all the for all the different features. The second one is overcast. Overcast, uh, you can predict yes. Uh, overcast uh, always predict yes. So there's no no errors. Uh, no errors. Good news. The third is rainy. Rainy uh, has two errors. Uh, we assume the output should be yes, right? And then the there are two errors. Huh? 
really no. So you find the uh, really no. There are two errors. And then you can, you need to calculate the total errors for the, for the outlook, for the outlook issue. Then you repeat this process for four different features, for four different features. Okay, it's a little bit, it's very tedious, very tired for human to do this kind of statistics, but it's very easy for computer to do that. So again, uh, there's a the count of probability, only uh, yes or no, uh, overcast, rending. Uh. So here's a table that with all the attributes has been summarized. Then we can calculate the, the likelihood uh, for the new day. Uh. Right. So get the statistic model. It's actually Bayesian method, right? Get the statistic model, then you can find the yes probability for one attribute or no probability. So suppose we have a table here, we want to predict, we want to predict the output, right? Predict the output. Then first uh, we select outlook is sunny, sunny, uh, the yes probability is two nine, nine multiplied by the second probability is humility high, right? Humility high is three nine, and then temperature cool, temperature cool is uh, high, three nine. Oh, uh, sorry, this is why here. So multiply with the likelihood of a yes together huh, for all the features. Windy, true. And the finally, the, the yes probability. Huh, windy, true. Then you can calculate the probability of likelihood of being yes. So what is this method? It's actually uh, naive base. Uh, okay, so by using this approach, making statistic model and the calculated probability of yes or no, you can uh, have the probability of, uh, for uh, input data, you can have the probability of yes or no. And you can see that the no has a higher probability, right? And then we can normalize the result. So now we know that the probability of a yes for the input data, uh, for this input data, uh, for this a uh, new day, for this input data, the probability of yes is 20.5% and the probability of no is 79.5%. And uh, this algorithm is actually naive based or naive based algorithm, naive based algorithm. So the probability what we are doing is P, B of A. So laws are P, B of A. And uh, this one is called prior, right? P, A. Prior is the probability of how many years you have in the data set. Prior, huh? prior. And the others are likelihood, likelihood. Uh-huh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, so it's called naive base because these assumed attributes are independent. Here's a formula, attribute one, two, three, four, price prior. Huh? Oh, so this is likelihood. This is prior. Maybe I should separate it. Right. Anyway. Uh, and we usually ignore the evidence part. We usually ignore because it doesn't change. The number of features. Of features. It's all the same for all the features. So we usually ignore this part. Okay. 
So now we know how to calculate knife base. Maybe it's a good homework. Right. Not not too difficult to implement. Easy to understand, easy to interpret by human. Good. No response means good. No no news is good news. No response is good new response. So yeah. But for numerical value or numbers, we need to assume they are normal distribution. Oh, normal distribution, and you use the mean and variance, mean and variance to calculate. Oh, okay. So here's the mean and variance. Oh, so it's assumed that uh, temperatures are numerical. Now it's uh, numbers. And the uh, humidity are numbers. So those numbers need to use the normal distribution. You calculate the mean and the deviation, and then, then as to the normal distribution to calculate the result, right? So temperature is 66. The mean is uh, 73, right? The variance is 6.2. So then you can calculate the probability, the same. So now you can use both the nominal um, data and the numerical data to calculate the naive base algorithm, right? And the result is very similar to our previous result with uh, nominal value, right? Okay, so actually it's naive base on naive. Now let's see how to build the decision tree. The core idea behind decision trees is the divide and the conquer, how divide and the conquer. So we choose most uh, informative. First, uh, choose the most informative attribute. So what is the most in informative attribute? Huh? So we get to calculate information, right? So second question is how to measure the amount of information. The entropy, we learn entropy in our probability class. So, and for information, it says that the amount of information is in reverse order of the probability of appearance, right? In other words, if you come to the class more often, you have less information, not less information. Okay, and uh, it will calculate log for information. Information will be to reverse order of your probability, and then we will get log. Those log when is one, log output is zero. So one means 100 percent. Why? If it's equal to one, then it's zero. So if you appear as 100 percent, your information is zero, and then this is equal to minus log of x, and then. Finally, calculate the expectation of the information is the entropy. And how to measure the information gain? K L divergence, right? It's just uh, uh, calculate the difference between the information. And then you can calculate the information gain. The gain that you, you have you get uh, between two different information. Difference between, or I could say the difference between two information. Uh. Okay, and remember it's a, a symmetry. So let's try to build our own decision tree. Cover, select the feature. And uh, let's draw the features together to see which feature you want to select. So I'll look, I have a three, Data type, three types: sunny, overcast, uh, rainy. All right, so outlook, temperature, and it shows the number of yes or no prediction here. So make us easy to understand. And then which one is better? We don't know yet. So let's calculate the entropy of each attribute. So let's calculate the entropy uh, for our outlook. So there are two. Yes, 
fragrance or no, or three no. For the Stanley prediction. So the entropy is actually the probability of uh, play and the probability of not play. So the entropy information, the amount of information that you can get. Right. If the feature only predict yes, then it's zero information. It cannot use to predict because always it only have one class, right? So you see the idea of information get. Or you see the idea of entropy. Yeah, yeah. So it will prefer that uh, you have a uh, balance output, right? If you have six output, it will prefer a balance three yes, three no. So if you only predict yes, then you have zero entropy. You can calculate by this. So, so it's actually yeah entropies for different class. Okay, then the information gain of this attribute. Once we calculate the uh, entropy for each data set, we need to calculate the information gain. Or suppose if we select this attribute, how much can we get? So yeah, so let's calculate the final total total outlook. Oh, there are nine yes, five no. So the total information of outlook attribute is 0 0.94. And uh, the average information uh, is 0 0.693. And finally, the game is basically the information of outlook uh, subtracted by the information of the three data types. So it's 0 0.94, 0 0.94 minus 0 0.693. And the final result is uh, 0 0.247. We use log two to, to calculate the attributes because in our computer we use binary, right? Binary data or binary data. So we use log two. And then repeat this process for all the features, you will get the information gain. So which attribute has maxima information gain? The largest information gain is outlook. So let's select Outlook as our first uh, tree branch. Tree branch. Okay. So let's select Outlook Sunny and uh, keep splitting. Uh, so repeat this process. Uh, so when we select Outlook, then we try to calculate the information again. Uh, again. So, but you need to rearrange the data set. So you suppose you. Now you have confirmed that uh, it's Outlook Sunny, so you should calculate the uh, information gain of, maybe I should say Outlook with Sunny. No? Outlook with Sunny. And the uh, humidity with Sunny. Right. And the windy with Sunny. No? So select Outlook Sunny and calculate heat splitting. So finally, the decision will be look like this. Okay, so very, I would say, very automatic process. It's a suitable for computer. No? It's not a task a suitable for human, but however, uh, once the data, the decision tree has been built, you can get some inside, right? So final decision tree, as you expect, if you choose overcast, it's always play, uh, but if you choose sunny, uh, it has, uh, if it has a high humidity, then no. So it's not an outdoor again. Huh? So it's a uh, raining and the windy true, windy force, and then yes, maybe it's a uh, basketball again, right? So let's uh, briefly introduce the decision tree, okay? So the decision tree we just uh, built is called ID3, ID3. And uh, this, uh, there are more variants. Uh, so the, the previous example, the decision tree algorithm model is called the iterative uh, dichotomy. Uh, dichotomy. Anyway, it's called ID3. Huh? 
is proposed by Rose Queen's then. Rose Queen then. In the induct introduction, induction of decision tree, not introduction, induction of he proposed the many decision tree algorithms. So the core idea is to use information gain to select attributes, right? And uh, here's the data set entropy. Here we use the uh, these for the training data, right? As the C case, the uh, samples of each class, number of samples of each class is the total number of the data set. And for each different class, we calculate the data set entropy. And then we calculate the attribute entropy for each attribute, right? It depends on how many type each data type inside the attribute. And then finally, we calculate again of the ID3. So what's the problem of ID3? First, it can be a very big tree and we need to cut unnecessary branch. It's called pruning. So there is no pruning strategy and it's very easy to overfit. It's easy to overfit the data set. And so it can only handle discrete data and prefer attributes with more features, right? So here's a big problem. If you have a feature called ID and ID, as you know, will be different for each data set. It will be easily overfit, right? Overfit. Because you can use ID to split all possible data set, right? So we prefer features with attributes with more features. So Queen and proposed new uh, decision tree model called C4.5. Try to solve the problem of uh, ID3. Can handle both continuous value and the discrete attribute and uh, so can also process missing attribute value. Okay. And then do proving. So it's improved a lot. Now of course it's more complicated. So I don't have time to show you all the algorithm. And actually you got idea, so just check uh, a best case and for each attribute find the normalized information again by splitting for each attribute. Oh. For each attribute, find a normalized information gain and uh, find the best uh, with highest normalized information gain, create a decision node, and uh, recurse the sublist to obtain a split. Oh. So it's a rough pseudo code. Oh. And uh, it has a more powerful version, but it's a commercial version. Oh. So this is increase and the small boosting and the weighting. Okay, so and there's another advanced the algorithm called classification and the regression tree. But sometimes the CRT is used for umbrella terms, it means all kinds of decision tree for the classification tree and the regression tree. But I did find an algorithm called CRT, and the CRT is uh, actually here. Or you, if you are interested, you can reference to this website. It's quite complicated but uh, powerful tree. Huh? So as the name suggests, it can support both classification and the regression. So it's a binary tree. ID3 and the ID3 and the C4.5 is not are not binary tree, right? Depends on how many features of an attribute you can split any branch. But to simplify this, CRT is a binary tree, 